It's a dual demand because silver is a metal of war. <clears throat> I don't like saying that, but it's true. There will be more and more demand for both gold and silver. And, you know, as many others have said, and, you know, I witnessed it for myself and the market proves it, that at some point, you know, as the gold rush really begins to and becomes very, very much of a sprint or a run to gold where people are panic buying or buying out of fear or whatever, and there's an increase or an acceleration into safe haven investments. Uh, gold could get to a level that's really unaffordable for a lot of people, yet they still have need protection. So they'll move into the silver market. So there'll be that kind of spillover. The price of silver has increased dramatically this year, leading many to speculate about how high it may go as 2024 approaches. One important factor to keep an eye on is the continuous battle between supply and demand, which has continuously influenced the silver market. According to the World Silver Survey, 2024 will mark the fifth year of silver shortages. In 2023, demand exceeded supply by over 142 million ounces, and by year's end, this shortfall is expected to nearly double to 265 million ounces. The main cause of this spiraling deficit is the rise in industrial demand. Historically, the demand for silver was evenly split between investment and industrial uses, but this balance has dramatically shifted. Industrial demand now accounts for 64% of global silver demand, up 19% from the year before. This increase is primarily due to the green energy transition, particularly the push for solar energy and the growing needs from the artificial intelligence and electric vehicle EV, sectors, some of the fastest growing industries today. As gold prices rise, investors may find it harder to access gold, which could drive them to silver as a more affordable alternative. David Morgan of Morgan Reports emphasizes silver's role as a safe haven investment, which becomes increasingly significant during periods of economic and political uncertainty. When investors face potential instability, they often flock to precious metals like silver and gold to safeguard their assets. Analysts like David have been discussing the sustained decline in silver prices, speculating that it could be a calculated attempt to keep costs for military technologies like Tomahawk missiles low. This tactic indicates a larger attempt to control silver prices by combining speculative market contracts with physical supply constraints. However, when actual demand exceeds supply, backwardation or delivery delays may result. We'll show snippets from David Morgan's interview to highlight the differences between paper markets and real life. But first, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and enable the notifications. Click to watch more videos. It's a dual demand because silver is a metal of war. I don't like saying that, but it's true. I mean, let's be objective about it. There's a lot of silver used in the military. In the military, I mean, batteries. First of all, when you have a mil spec, a military specification, those are high standards for reliability. So you don't want a, you know, a certain type of battery when you can have a silver battery that you know is going to last longer, charge faster, or whatever. I'm not saying all the batteries in the military are silver. What I'm saying is that. There's a great deal of silver batteries used in the military, communications. I mean, everything that goes with logistics and weaponry, almost all of it uses silver to some extent. So if you're increasing the buildup of arms, buildup of communication, builds up of troops, <clears throat> you are going to use more silver. So that's point number one. Point number two is what you said, Jesse, and that is safe haven status. So there will be more and more demand for both gold and silver. And you know, as many others have said, and, you know, I witness it for myself and the market proves it, that at some point, you know, as the gold rush really begins to becomes very, very much of a sprint or a run to gold where people are panic buying or buying out of fear or whatever, and there's an increase or an acceleration into safe haven investments. Uh, gold could get to a level that's really unaffordable for a lot of people, yet they still have need protection. So they'll move into the silver market. So there'll be that kind of spillover effect that will take place. So you'll have two demands. You'll have military demand due to the usage of needing more silver for war efforts. And then you'll have safe haven status because of the war. So they sort of feed on each other. The true nature of it, do you get an idea of how it can be managed? Because if you can base things on supply and demand, and you can create an infinite supply of contracts, that will obviously be able to manage how high a price will go in wheat or soybean oil, cotton or silver. And that's what takes place. 
And the only reason they can get away with it, so to speak, is because on the physical demand side, when enough people stand for delivery, they're able to meet that demand in most cases. There has been instances where they could not meet that demand and the market has gone into backwardation or they've gotten delays of delivery, but those are rare so far. That's what I expect to see in the future. So it is frustrating. Is there a, you know, kind of a benchmark around 30? I would say yes, <clears throat> uh, based on the charts and, and really more than the charts. Years ago, and silver just got to around 30, maybe it was slightly above, I forget. It says we got to tamp down the silver market. Tamp down the silver market? What's this guy talking about? He's telling you in plain English that they want to protect that, that price level. And he's associated with the exchange. He's supposed to be a neutral party. He's not supposed to have any opinion on the market at all. And yet he comes out and publicly says they need to tamp down the silver. Back to the video. Main point is that the industrial demand, particularly with PVs, uh, photovoltaics, or solar panels, has been increasing very rapidly of late. What's interesting is I did a study back in 2010, and I said, okay, I hit the mark, you know, from 2000 to 2010, 11, and called the top of the market. But before that, I called the top in 2011. In 2010, I took a blank sheet of paper metaphorically and said, okay, what's the silver market looking like for the next 10 years? So I had it pretty right on the first 10 years from 2000. And I was just about as bullish as I was the previous 10 years, although the deficit was um, starting to build. In other words, we ate up 1.5 billion ounces of stockpile above ground and we're starting to rebuild the above ground stockpile. Nonetheless, because of solar, I, I was bullish. And the amount of solar that was projected to be used uh, came out of uh, Metals Focus. I think they had a different name at that time. I can't recall. Uh, Jessica Cross did the study. And I based a lot of my analysis on what she'd written. And what she showed was about 140 million ounces a year and about five years out used for photovoltaics alone. And what actually happened was we produced the amount of panels that she projected, but we got about a fourfold increase in efficiency. So it used like one quarter the amount of silver that it did back in 2010. These are round numbers. And uh, so obviously the demand was there, uh, but the efficiencies improved. So I'm not making excuses. All I'm saying is that she projected a lot of silver demand and photovoltaics. It's true, but it wasn't what she had projected. It was less. But now we're at a point where it's significant and uh, it, it's having a major impact on the industrial side. Then you throw AI and the power requirements for that on top of it, and all we need is more and more power. And we're getting in a position with the green movement that we're getting very inefficient energy sources. And of course, the traditional ones are kind of poo-pooed, you know, gas and coal and oil, and yet they're very efficient. Uh, sources. So the point is simple. The industrial demand alone will or could, I should say could, take over the entire silver supply in a few years, believe it or not. And then if you add on top of that monetary concerns, which increase almost daily, and there is a uh, bigger surge in safe haven protection, uh, gold's too expensive, I'll move to silver. The Chinese have awakened to silver. You've got two demands that are increasing at the same time. And that I think is significant. So that's the big picture. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not seeing it take place day after tomorrow, but it's starting to take place. And I think that trend will continue for years. I'm talking, you know, two, three years, 